4D Vase Acrylic Nail Art Tutorial by Hot Pink Zebra Polish. Hi guys, in today's video I'm going to be showing you this really cool vase that I have that I just wanted to make. Um, so it's just on this nail, it's just a clear vase. There is very little really to this at all as far as design elements go. The fun part of it is though, there is a magnet in the bottom of the vase. So then I've got these little flowers that I will be linking different videos to those in the description box below. So I've got some roses and some daisies and I will be, like I said, I'll be showing you those as well in, ne in the next videos that because they also have a magnet on the bottom of their stem, you can set those in there and they click into place and they will hold on and you can just change out the flowers in your vase, which is just so cool and like like you, you could even switch these up for a season, like you could put sunflowers in or poinsettias in the winter and just keep kind of rotating it and it's just, it's such a cool idea that I absolutely adore and I'm going to be showing you this on a new a new little nail tip box that I just got. You can always use nail tips um, and I'll put links to those in the description box below so check that out if you're in the market for some coffin shaped tips that are full cover. I know that a lot of times people ask me where I get my nail tips because they are full cover and most of the time I say that they aren't because I shape them into that. These ones are full cover so if that is what you're looking for I hope that you enjoy that and don't forget to click subscribe to see all my future videos as well. So here are the tips, like I said, they are full cover right from the get-go, which is fantastic and definitely a time saver if you are using them as full cover tips. And so if, <laughs> I just have to get them open. I have little tweezers by me pretty much at all times to do things like this because my nails just refuse. But I'm just going to get this opened up. There we go. And it's really nice that they come in this little case. I know that's something kind of small, but just that is just so nice to have them already separated out like that it makes it so much easier just to grab the size that you're looking for so i ended up wearing um the three from this company i over the top of an enhancement which i have on this thumbnail generally i end up using a two just because i like to make sure that it does cover all the way from side to side and i fit them a little bit big for these practice tips but these ones are a three so they're a little bit on the large side which is fine i mean you can always shrink down the sides if you need to so then i just wanted to square up the end a little bit because it had a little plastic a little bit of extra plastic on the end which most nail tips do so i just filed that quick before i started the design so now to begin i just went with a very pale pink background the reason i wanted to do pink is because i knew from the beginning i wanted to do a rose and i wanted to do a daisy those are my two flowers that i had in mind right from the beginning and I figured both of those would look all right on a pink background. After I did it though, I was thinking to myself that really like a pale blue background would have probably been better, or like a light green maybe, which, you know, at this point is too late, but I've kind of decided that the light pink wasn't the right choice. I do like it still, but I think a different color would have been better. But then I'm going to encase it with a layer of clear acrylic just to make sure that everything is nice and strong. Like I said, there's really very little to this nail. If you wanted to though, you could do like a like a light filigree or something in the background or a little bit of a lace just if you wanted to dress it up so it wasn't just a clear vase on there in the background but I would try to keep whatever it is simple and subtle just so that it wouldn't detract away from the flowers once you start changing them out because that's the fun part so then after that clear acrylic has completely dried or set actually I'm going to go through and I'm going to be filing it I started with a relatively coarse bit just to remove the bulk and make sure it had the right shape and then I'm going to take a finer bit and just refine the surface of it a little bit make sure it's nice and smooth that bit is fantastic for that and then I'm just going to take a hand file and fix up the free edge. So now I'm using poster putty here but also some polymer clay would work just fine and I'm going to be figuring out the shape that I want my vase to be. So I'm going to be just kind of sculpting it out into the shape that I have in mind. Keep in just keep it in mind though that you have to sculpt this slightly smaller than the shape that you want or the size that you want your base to be in the end because you're sculpting on top of it around it so this is the inside shape and you have to think about what you want the outside shape to be so just shrink down the size you want your base to be just a tiny bit to compensate for that then wrap it up in some plastic wrap as tightly as you can try not to squish your vase shape but get it as conformed into all those little grooves and like I know that little indent that I have in mine was a little tricky to get it there but try to wrap it up as good as you can with the plastic wrap hold on to it and while that's wrapped up start applying some clear acrylic over the top of the vase try to keep a nice even layer over the top of the entire thing also make sure it isn't too thin that's the one problem with sculpting on top of something really slippery like plastic wrap is that the acrylic tends to get really thin and it's hard to tell that it's doing that especially when you're sculpting on top of something like this and then you go to take it off and you got a paper thin area that just wants to break right away so just bear in mind that you want to keep it on the thicker side and it probably won't even be that thick then after that has set 100 percent, make sure that it's not flexible at all you want to remove the poster putty from the inside of the vase it might take a little bit of a tug of war but 
get it out of there and then file the vase just a little bit mostly that bottom edge just to even it out and then I'm going to be removing the dust and filling in some of the crevices on the inside now when you're using that plastic wrap it is pretty much impossible to get it perfectly smooth so you're going to want to just add a little bit of clear acrylic on the inside just to smooth it out then add a magnet in the bottom of the vase while that clear acrylic is still wet and just have it right in the center try to get it as in the center and as close to the edge as you can so that it's right in the bottom and then just continue adding that clear acrylic around filling in any gaps that there might be and right around that mouth of the vase mine wasn't quite even it wasn't quite circular so I added a little bit extra acrylic in there so I'd have some room to file so now I'm just gonna be filing up the vase in general mostly focusing now on the outside of it and that mouth just to make sure that it does have a nice smooth symmetrical shape that being said vases come in all kinds of weird shapes now I mean they're gorgeous and they're fun and they're kind of abstract so you can have fun with this and you can it does not have to be symmetrical it does not have to be a classic vase shape like mine was you can really do all sorts of crazy things with this and play around with it and the other thing is your vase doesn't have to be clear it doesn't have to look like glass you could sculpt this with a color and make it do all sorts of things with it you can even make a cute little terracotta pot and do it as I like a potted plant instead too. I mean, you could definitely switch things up and take this concept and, you know, play with it. So then remove the dust again after you have it filed into the shape that you like and apply a layer of gel sealer to the inside of the vase. Really make sure though that you get rid of all the dust. Like I used a little bit of some isopropyl on a no, on a lint-free wipe just to get rid of it. And then I'm just going to be filling in the inside of that vase with gel sealer cure it and then you're going to need to attach it to the nail. So now I use clear acrylic to do this because a, I don't like nail glue, and B, my nail glue was clogged and I couldn't get it open. And I just decided that I wasn't going to mess around with it anymore. And I knew that every time I go to unclog nail glue, the whole thing just like squirts out. And I swear half of the bottle ends up all over my hands and I glue myself to something. I'm just waiting for the day I glue my hand on my camera or something terrible like that or the brush in my hand. But you know, if I glued a brush to my hand, I probably just have to keep doing art and that would be okay. Anyways, after that is set in place enough that you can let go of it, go through and fill in all the gaps that go around the vase with some more clear acrylic, and there will be some, so you will have to go through and do this. Mostly this is just for appearances. It's not like an aquarium nail where you have to make sure that it is airtight and watertight because it does. you're not going to be filling your vase with water. Although I suppose you could, but then you can have a hole to take your flowers in and out. Anyways, that could be a different thing. Maybe a different day. I'll do a partially aquarium with a flower coming out. That'd be cool. As I'm brainstorming mid video just fill in around it just to make sure there's no gaps Then I like to add a little bit of a foot on the bottom or a base on the bottom of the vase just with more clear acrylic just so that it has looks like it will actually sit and then apply a layer of gel sealer on top of the vase make sure that that is nice and shiny and as clear as you can get it there are clear acrylics that are better than others mine is kind of eh. so I mean, if you had a better one it would definitely get more clear than mine after that is cured, you can go through and just apply a layer of matte top coat around the background. I like, it wasn't really necessary to add the matte top coat, but it does smooth things out just a little bit. And then this portion of the video is done. Like I said, I will show you, and there will be tutorials on making the daisy and the rose. And both of those videos will be linked in the description box when they become available. And so I'm going to be uploading them over the next two days. So definitely check back and look in the description box for those if you're watching this at a later date, because they will be there. And they're so fun. And this is such a cool idea. I'm just loving it. So I hope you guys like it as much as I do. And please share recreations with me on Facebook and Instagram. I would love to see them and I will see you in my next video. Bye.